الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله نويت سنة الاعتكاف Alhamdulillah, this is the custom and this is the way of Dawud Islami. When a muballiq, a preacher, begins his talk, begins his bayan, as we say in our terminology, we are reminded of how we should enter the masjid according to the sunnah and what benefits we will receive if we make this intention of Aritikaf as we repeat it together in the way to Sunnah al Aritikaf. First and foremost, when we enter the Masjid, the house of Allah, we should prepare ourselves and remind ourselves that we are going to a very sacred area. We should remind ourselves that we must take care once we enter. We must consider our manners, our etiquettes, the way we speak, the way we behave, the way we sit. And if, inshallah, if you enter according to the sunnah, you enter with your right foot and you read the dua, Allah maftah li adwa wa rahmati. A very beautiful dua, the meaning, O oh Allah, open to me your, door, your doors of mercy. And as we know from the ulama that as soon as you enter the masjid for every breath you are rewarded. And inshallah by making this intention of itikaf as well as all the other actions you may perform, actions of worship, you will also receive rewards for this intention of itikaf. We recited peace and blessings in favor of the beloved Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because, simply because Allah says in the Qur'an, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah صَلِّ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَبَارَى An action attributed to Allah and His angels and Allah is ordering the believers that you must send blessings, salat and salam in abundance to who? The messenger, the messenger of messengers, Imam Al-Anbiya, the leader of prophets, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a way of expressing gratitude. When we remember the favors of the Prophet ﷺ, let us remind ourselves of the favor of favors, the fact that Allah sent His Beloved as a mercy for the entire universe. And then the favors of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. When we say, peace and blessings be upon you, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ is not in need of our prayers. Allah showers His blessings and the angels are always praying on Him. This is a way of gratitude for us. And when we recite peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah وسلم, we receive the mercy of Allah. Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, Verse 21, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَهُ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْغَةٌ حَسَنًا 
that indeed that in the message the example for you in the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have a beautiful example generally speaking for mankind this example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is beneficial and especially for the believers an example which leads to success and guidance an example which leads to the pleasure of Allah an example which leads to, to the love of almighty Allah every moment every aspect of his life we can learn from and if we comply with whatever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and we will try to imitate him in every way then we will be blessed with the love of our creator almighty allah in fact if we follow the example and the sunnah the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will be rewarded in this world we will receive honor and respect in this world and in the hereafter proof of this let us refer to the quran almighty allah says in surah al imran verse 31 qul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum allah wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wallahu ghafurur rahim allah is saying to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh beloved say to the people that in kuntum tuhibbun allah If you love Allah, fattabi'uni, follow me. And if you do this, you make the claim of loving Allah, or if you love Allah and then you follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what is your reward? Yuhibbukum Allah. Allah will love you. Wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum and Allah will forgive your sins. Now what is meant by this word ittiba' the topic of the speech you may have gathered by now is following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the word used is ittiba' and this is why inshallah i would like to expand on this particular this verse of the quran first let us understand this word ittiba' what do we mean by ittiba' When you go to the books of language let us look at what Lisan al-Arab says in Lisan al-Arab it is mentioned that when we say ittiba it means to walk behind someone someone is walking in front of you and you are following you are walking behind and taj al-urus in taj al-urus there's an addition to this that the word at-tab'u and also at-tab'u they both have the meaning of can be translated as shadow as well because the shadow always follows the sun so when you are following someone it is also said that you are in, you are in his shadow or you are following his shadow sometimes this expression is used it's also used for the bee which other bees follow so basically from the books of language we conclude that from the books of language ittiba means to follow to go after to follow and as far as the term itself the, the meaning in usage what does it mean imam abu hasan al amadi says that ittiba can be of qawl and fi'l ittiba can be of speech sayings and also action when we say when we refer to ittiba the following of speech it means that the person who is following he fulfills the purpose of the speech he fulfills the purpose of the statement and when we refer to ittiba of action it simply means to imitate the individual simply because he does he performs the action he just copied So this is the meaning of ittiba. The word which is used for obedience, ita'a, also, inshallah, just explain this very quickly. It's important that we understand these words. So if 
refer to the Quran and Sunnah, we are very clear on what Allah is saying and what Allah means by in His verses. Ita'a means, according to uh, the Sound of Arab, it means to comply with an order. Someone gives you an order, you follow it. And Imam Abu Hassan al amadi says that one who imitates another due to honor and respect, this is called obedience. Mufti Ahmad Yadhan Na'imi alayhi Rahman, he comments on this verse and he says that there is a test for everything. The people of the book, they claim to love Allah. They would say to the Sahaba radiallahu they would say to the Prophet that we love Allah. So Allah revealed, O Messenger, tell them, they claim to love me, they claim to love Allah, they must follow you, say, فَاتَّبِعُونِي You must follow me. This was an answer to the people of the book also. And then he says that obedience can be divided in three. There are three types of, three types of obedience. Whether it's bil khawf, al tufiya, bil ghab, you have a purpose or motive, that's the second one. And the third one is bil mahabba, out of love. And this ita'a, this obedience out of love is the best obedience. And this is the obedience that Allah is referring to. When He says, if, if you follow the Messenger of Allah, you have followed Allah, you have obeyed Allah. If you obey the Messenger, you have obeyed Allah. And then, Mufti Ahmad Yarkhan Na'ibi Rahmah, he says, why is obedience out of love better than the other types of obedience? He said, because this obedience is from the heart and it's lasting. When you are obeying because of fear, that does not have the same efficacy, that does not have the same sincerity. When you are obeying for a motive, for a purpose, you're, in your mind you're thinking about your purpose. I want to achieve this, I want to gain this benefit. But when you obey bin mahabba with love, out of love, then this is the true and sincere obedience. This is why Allah did not say, "In kuntum tuhafun Allah." He said, "In kuntum tuhibun Allah." This is why the word "mahabba" was used. Also, obedience can have two purposes: either you attain the love of He who you are, uh, the love of the one you are obeying, or you try to save yourself from His anger, from His wrath. And here. The first is meant, the fact that you obtain, you attain the love of he or the one who is being obeyed. Just to attain his love. <laughs> Musti Ahmad Yadha Na'imi further says that love is of two types. Tabari and Sababi. And here we are referring to Tabari. Like the love of care that parents have for their children, this is the love that is meant here. And he also says that focus on the word ittiba. Ittiba means to follow, to walk behind. It does not mean to be equal or walk side to side. He is implying, uh, he is giving a message to certain people who claim equality and, uh, and try to. Uh, Try to convey this to others. Mufti Ahmad Yad Khan Naimi says, Look at the word, focus on the word ittiba. It means to walk behind, not walk alongside or walk by side, side to side like a brother. It means walk like a servant behind his master. Fattabi'uni. This is, this is the understanding that, that we should take from this ayah. And then he says that ittiba can be. On the outside and the inside. In, when we refer to ittiba, inward ittiba, it means to preserve your beliefs and to protect your beliefs and thoughts. And when we refer to ittiba, 
anzul ittiba' it means that the, the ittiba', the obedience, the following should be expressed by every single limb in your body. So when we follow the Prophet wasallam, the ahsan, the best way is to follow him in such a way that it is manifested in every single limb that we are following him. So from the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you walk, everything about you should express this following and ittiba' of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi When is ittiba' found? You follow someone when you love them, when you admire them. You see today, outside, on the streets, in our communities, the young Muslims, even the children, they've got their football shirts on, they support a team, they emulate a player, a football player, they try to behave like him, try to act like him, try to play like him. Where does this following come from? What motivates this following? It's love. They may not admit it, but inside they admire and love the person they emulate. And we have to explain to the Muslims that we should love and imitate and emulate the Prophet ﷺ. His rightly guided successes. The Salaf al-Salihin, the awliya, Shaykh al-Tariq of Amir al-Sunnah, Amir al-Dawah al-Islam. Those who follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ, who teach us how we should follow him. They, they are the people we should follow. The scholars, the ulama, the Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. And going back to the point that ittiba' following is only found when you love and admire someone, when you have love for someone. And as going back to going to a hadith in Bukhari, Kitab al Iman, the Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that three qualities. If three qualities are found in a believer, then he has experienced the halawa, the sweetness of faith. Halawa to iman. One of the three qualities. Let us all focus and reflect. Do we have these qualities? Are we working towards these qualities? Number one, he loves Allah and his messenger more than everything. More than your parents, more than your children, you love Allah and His Messenger. That's the first sign. One quality. Second quality. He loves others for the sake of Allah. For Allah, He loves others. If He loves another believer, He has love for him. It's not because He wants financial gain from that believer, not because He wants to attain fame. Through, through that person, not because he wants to uh, be successful in his business through that person. No, he loves that individual before Allah because he is someone who complies with the Sharia, who follows the example of the Prophet ﷺ. He is a righteous individual and you love him for Allah. That is the second sign. And the third quality is that he would detest or he detests, he hates going back to kufr, going back to infidelity, disbelief. He hates this to such an extent, he hates it like he would hate being thrown into the fire. So he loves his religion, he loves Islam so much that to even think of another way, it would be like throwing him into fire. And this is why the Sahaba عنهم, when they were told by the kuffar of the time to leave Islam, they would not leave Islam because they had experienced halal to iman. They loved Islam so much, they loved the Prophet so much that when they were beaten, when they were beaten, they would not turn away from Islam. They would give them, they became martyrs, but they did not turn away from Islam. What restrictions do you have today when it comes to complying with Islam? 
Alhamdulillah, you can walk on the following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ freely. No such restrictions. You will not be stopped on your way. People will not so, uh, throw stones at you. This is the freedom that you have in a country which does not belong to Muslims. Why not take advantage of this freedom and express the fact that you love the Prophet ﷺ, you follow the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. So the people who see you, they realize that these people, they are true to their claim and they truly love their Messenger, the Messenger of Islam ﷺ. It's time to wake up now. Set an example. For too long now, we've been following the West. We have our way of life, our way of living. We have Uswatul Hassan, the best example. If you have the best example, why do you emulate somebody else? Why do you follow another? Why do you feel proud of following others when you have the example of the Prophet if you love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam truly, then you would be proud of following him. You would be proud when you walk with your white clothes on the street. You would be proud when you walk on the street with your imama. You would be proud when you walk on the street with your beard. Why? Why? Because you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we also learn from this, uh, from the verse, that to follow the Prophet Sallallahu you must learn about his life. You must learn about his decisions, about certain incidents in his life, so you can follow him accordingly. And love, this differentiates the believers in the perfection of their faith. Mahabba and love which motivates ittiba, which motivates following. This differentiates between, uh, this differentiates in the perfection of, of faith. How? The hadith of Bukhari. That none of you, none from you or none of you, believes until he loves me, the Prophet is saying. None from you will believe or believes until he loves me more than his children, more than his parents. More than all people. Ask yourselves today, do you love the Prophet ﷺ more than your friends? If you love the Prophet ﷺ more than your friends, when it was time to pray in the masjid with jama'ah and your friends knocked on your door, and told you, let's go to the cinema, or let's go to play football, or let's just hang around on the streets. You would say to your friends, no, I will go to pray. I love Allah and His Messenger. The Prophet ﷺ has said that I should pray in the masjid with the congregation. And I give preference to the Prophet ﷺ. I give preference to what the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said. And I will not go with you. But do we do this? Do we give preference to the Prophet ﷺ? If we don't, then how can we say we love him? How can we say we love him more than everyone? More than our parents, more than children, more than everyone else. The Prophet ﷺ also said that you cannot become true believers until you love me more than yourself. If your ego is saying that you cannot follow the sunnah, people will look at you. Can you face the remarks of people? Can you face many closed doors of employment? Can you face the remarks of your of people, of ignorant people? People, ignorant people, whether they are in family or whether they are in the community. Can you put up with this? Can you put up with people calling you uh, names? Ego is saying this. So if you love the Prophet more than yourself, then you will not be diverted by any of these whispers from the ego. Also, just examples of how the Sahaba عنهم, would follow the Prophet ﷺ, how much they loved him, how they would strive 
to know what the Prophet ﷺ had said so they may comply with what he said. Sayyiduna Abu Ayyub Ansari عنه, the first man to, to serve the Prophet ﷺ in Madinatul Munakara. He once became unsure about a hadith. He was not sure about the wording. And at that time, from the Sahaba, there was only another Sahabi, another companion who was alive. Uqba bin Amir ta'ala. But where was he? He was all the way in Egypt. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub Ansari ta'ala anhu, he left his home. He traveled, he crossed deserts. Why is he doing this? Because he is unsure about, about the wording of a hadith. He knows the topic of the hadith. He knows what the Prophet ﷺ said, but he's just unsure about the exact wording. So he doesn't just say, oh, I know the, I know the overview of the hadith, so that's okay. What he said, he traveled, crossed deserts. He never knew where the other Sahabi lived. All he knew was that he lives in Egypt. He went to the Amir of, of Egypt and asked, inquired about the Sahabi. Because he was a Sahabi, obviously the people in the community knew him. And when they told him, uh, they gave him the address, they gave, they gave him the location, he went and Uqba bin Amr ta'ala anhu embraced him. Two Sahaba meeting after a long time. <laughs> Two brothers. And then he said, straight away, he said, I've come all this way uh, for you, you remember the saying of the Prophet I've become unsure about the words, one of the words. And the hadith was that uh, the, the believer who conceals the faults and defects of his Muslim brother, this is the overview, on the day of judgment Allah will conceal his faults. For this, for this hadith, he traveled, he crossed deserts. Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was told a man reports a certain hadith. He was told this. But he is in Sham, he is in Syria. What did Sayyidina Abdullah bin Jabir do? Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala He bought a camel. He went out and he bought a camel, not brought, bought a camel, paid for. He bought a camel and he traveled for a whole month, one month. When he got to this person, that individual recognized this is the Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ, Jabir bin Abdullah ta'ala he, he rushed out and he embraced Sayyidina Jabir ta'ala And he said, why did you come to me? I, you, you should have sent a message and I would have come to your service. Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah ta'ala said, that I have heard you narrate a certain hadith, I have only come for this purpose. I do not want to die before I listen to this hadith that you report. This was their love for the sayings of the Prophet Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he, when he would travel, he would stop at the locations where the Prophet stopped. He would pray in all the locations where the Prophet ﷺ prayed. He would make his camel sit exactly where the Prophet ﷺ made his camel sit. And not only this, the tree, there was a tree under which the Prophet ﷺ he rested for some time. And out of love, for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he would water this tree just to keep that memory alive keep that place alive and green where the Prophet Sallallahu had rested once Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma he was walking to the masjid and his nephew saw him his nephew was riding, he was on a mule and his nephew said why are you walking uncle? don't you have a mule? don't you have a donkey? or a camel and he said I do but I saw the Prophet sallallahu walking so I am also walking the messenger of Allah sallallahu walked to the masjid so 
For this reason, I also walk into the masjid. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallu ala al-habib. A narration which reminded me of Shaykh Tariqat Amiri Ahli Sunnat, Hazrat Alama Abu Al-Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas Al-Tar Qadri, Dawa Al-Bargah Mul'aliya. His spiritual efficacy, his teachings, his passion, his devotion has led to this. And this is nothing uh, when you, those brothers who have attended the annual gathering in Multan, as far as the eye can see, all you can see is cream. And you try to walk from the front right, uh, right to the back where the railway line is, you get tired. You carry on walking, carry on walking, and all you see are, are brothers who are striving for the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And they are there with enthusiasm, motivated to preach, to work, and they express the love for their share of Miriam his sunnah. Why do they do this? Because Amir Ahl Sunnah, he has and he loves the Prophet dearly, intensely. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said this. Imam Muslim mentions this in his Sahih in the book of Paradise, its bliss and the people of Paradise. He says that among those of my community who love me most intensely, are certain people who will come after me and these people who come after me, they would give their property and their family in exchange for seeing me. They would have so much love for me that they would give their property away. They would leave their families just to see me. This reminds you of the Sahaba when they would not see the Prophet they would ask in the streets of Madiyah to Munawwara. They would become restless. They would ask the other Sahaba, have you seen the Prophet ﷺ today? And their restlessness would only end when they would see the Prophet ﷺ. Do we love him so much? Do we yearn for the vision just to see the Prophet ﷺ? Do we ever think about this? Do we work for this? Do we send peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ in abundance? If you stay in this environment of Dawah Islam, inshallah you will. Inshallah you will yearn. Inshallah you will express your love. Inshallah you will invoke peace and blessings on the Prophet ﷺ in abundance. Inshallah. Just stay in this environment of Dawah Islam. It just it naturally rubs off. It, it just, it's a case of you, the company you keep, the company you keep will always affect you. And if you keep the company of those who are striving to follow the Prophet wasallam, then inshallah you will also begin to strive. Sallu <laughs> alayhi habib. So dear Islamic brothers, this is the purpose of Dawah Islam that we encourage each other, we create this passion to strive for the Sunnah, for the Qur'an and Sunnah. We follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ, we become believers and Muslims by name and by nature. Ignore the comments of people who may try to classify you as doing too much, or you're working yourself up. We love the Prophet and we express our love in every way. Alhamdulillah, the work of Dawah Islami is taking place in many countries around the world. And we have many branches in Dawah Islami, all working in different fields. We have a branch of Dawah Islami which is working in schools and colleges and universities. You have the Jami'at. Jamiat al Madina, where the scholar producing machine, you can say, the school, the school which is preparing scholars for the future. And inshallah, in the near future, we will have our Jamiat, a whole system in the UK as well. Inshallah. We have brothers working in uh, the Majlis of Ta'widat 
who are providing advice and spiritual help through through the through the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah and the guidance that Sh Shaykh Tariqat has provided. We also have the Madrasa al Madina, which and a special Madrasa system for adults, where brothers they, they in a different masajid they have a certain time and they have a study circle where they teach how uh, teach adults how to read the Quran because adults may feel shy. They don't want to sit with with other students and read. So when you have a group of adults and you teach them separately, it's more successful. All these branches of Dawud Islami, this work of Dawud Islami, this purpose, our purpose, that I will strive to rectify, rectify myself and all the people of the world. This is our purpose. And I invite all of you to be part of this mission, to be part of this purpose, to be part of Dawud Islami. Inshallah, this will lead to success in this world and the aftermath. Amin.